hello again, guys. Uh, hopefully you'll start popping in again here. Uh, I just restarted, so hopefully it will work this time. We had a low connection. So thanks again for joining me. My name's Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we, where we make uh, little, cute, lovely, and quirky embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. It's still looking a little goofy here on my end. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we how far we get here tonight. Uh, so I am going to be uh, working on the top or the sandwiching of my triangle tango quilt. Uh, oh, I can see you now. Great. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, I can see you popping in now. So I think it's, I think we're working now. Awesome. That makes me feel better. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys again for joining me here tonight. Uh, we are sandwiching together the triangle tango quilt, and I'm going to be doing it on my little table in my little room right here. And we're just going to see how this goes. This might be crazy, but, uh, I think we'll be okay. So I am using, I have the, this, uh, Heirloom machine quilting book. Uh, it's actually my mom. I gotta bring it. I gotta return it. <laughs> uh, but she has a method in here for uh, sandwiching a quilt on a table, and I am kind of using her method. So I will kind of walk you through that, and we will see how it goes. So I'm going to flip you guys around, and we will get going right away here. All right. All right, so I have pulled out, I'm going to try and get real high for you guys here. I don't know quite how high we can get. Oh, hold on a sec. There we go. We're going to have to go kind of at an angle, I think, here tonight. So we'll go, we'll go like this because um, my phone uh, doesn't want to record then. So I think it's still recording. Okay, good. So, all right, so here is our quilt. And uh, uh, one thing I started is I divided my table into halves, and there was a clever way of doing that. So we're going to try and find the middle of all of these pieces. So uh, one way they recommended in the book is to, with a toothpick, I didn't have a toothpick, so I have, I, but I found some kitchen twine. Uh, if you tape that at every half, there's one there, one there, and I'm going to put one right here. Uh, then once we uh, lay the back of the quilt, uh, we can match up, we can feel, we'll be able to feel those um, points. So, all right, so I'm going to just make like a straight line here. All right, so I'm going to tilt you guys down. So my table here, the halfway point is about... Uh, oop, is about um, 32 and a half inches. So I got my ruler out here. We're gonna go the 32 and a half, and then I'm gonna just stick this uh, little piece of string here. Let's just double check from there to there. Yep, 32 and a half. All right. We're fine. So here's the center. So now when I lay my fabric on top of it, I will still, I can just feel that center. So I'll always know uh, where the center of the sides of the table are. So that's awesome. Uh, here are our pins. I did, I threw a link. Um, oof, we're a little goofy here today. So I threw a link to these in. So these are the curved safety pins. They have a little bend in them. That's how we're going to sandwich the quilt together. So I have these, and I also have a whole thing of clamps. So you guys, I could not find any binder clips that were big enough to clamp to my table here. But my husband does some film stuff, and they have a lot of clamps for that. So I found these in the basement, and uh, I'm going to use these to clamp uh, this, the bottom of my quilt here, the back of the quilt, um, to the table. So that will keep it from sliding uh, when we get started here. So, all right. 
first step is I'm going to have to find the center of these. So ultimately, we want the right side of the fabric down and then the wrong side up because we want the seams on, on the inside here. So let's see what we got. Okay, here's a seam. So I'm using the table. The table is, here's the long way of the table and the short way is right here. I'm gonna mimic that with the quilt. So I'm gonna put the long um, area going this way and then the short this way. So uh, if I get these seams, I'll tilt you guys up again here in a sec. There we go. All right, so I have my two seams. Hold on here. <laughs> this is gonna be a little, little tricky here today. All right, so I have uh, a seam here and a seam here. And uh, I'm going to use those seams to help fold this to find the center. So I'm going to just fold this towards me. And I'm going to match up those seams. I think that seems like a decent way to find the center here. Because I kind of want that seam in the center. So here's one. Okay. Oh, Bonnie, this is how you sandwich your quilts. Awesome. Yeah, I think, I think it's just going to take a little while to get situated, but I think once I have that, then we'll be fine. So I have that fold. I think I might just use that as my center line. Eh, I should probably still, still check. So I do have my seams kind of lined up now. Um, I think I'm going to, oops, sorry, I bumped you. I'm going to fold it again this way to match those seams up this way as well. And then we will have our, our halfway point. So yeah. So if I can get this um, all lined up well down here, then we will have our center points. Let's just give it a shake or two. Okay, I'm gonna shimmy it up. All right, so here the seams are meeting. Uh, so this point right here is going to be our center. So I'm just going to kind of go this way a little and just press it this way a little as well. Get a little bit of a point in there. And so now I want to extend it this way. I'm going to want this long enough that it matches up with this side of the table here. All right, so I'm just matching, matching up these ends. See you. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me, you guys, here tonight. I know this is awkward and, and weird today, but I think uh, I think we're gonna get it. This is kind of the big, like, difficult part of it, but after this we'll be fine. All right, so this is my line up there. I just want to crease it a little. So now I'm going to fold this this way. All right, so we have our center point this way. So I'm going to just line that up with with um, the side. And uh, let's see. 
So I can feel that line here. Uh, remember that, that little uh, blue line that we put right here? That is the, my center point. So I just have to line up that center point with here. And I, gotta, I have the center points on the edge here too, like here. You can see it right there, but I can, I can feel it. So I gotta line up that fold. And I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna clamp that just while I'm working here. So it doesn't slide through the floor. And then this side. All right, my center point is a little farther over here. Okay. I think we're Good. So I'm going to start out by just clamping this side again so this doesn't move on me. And I am going to now flip this open again. <laughs> so we almost, we almost have this center. We're getting there here. Alright, as long as I can see this line. Yeah, here's our center line. We'll walk around the table here. Okay, so I'm about ready to start clamping, but now I can see my fold line, so I can, and I can also feel uh, my little pieces of yarn on, on the table. So I know that this is the center, this is the center. Let's get the top. Okay, top is centered. We just gotta get over here, pull on that a little bit. Perfect. Okay, we are centered. So uh, again, remember I put those little markings. I can feel that piece of that piece of twine that I put underneath here. We folded it in half twice so we can see our our center lines. And uh, I'm going to just start by putting a clamp right here. Ooh, I keep hitting you guys. I'm gonna have to go up a little higher. My head keeps hitting you. All right. So I got a clamp at the bottom of the table here. I'm going to put a couple there right away. I can't, I can only go on certain parts of the table because it's, it's uh, too fat in other spots. All right. I'm going to go to the top of the table. It looks like there's the same amount of fabric on the on the floor. All right, so this is where I'm going to kind of smooth it out and bring it towards me a bit. Yep, I think this is definitely kind of the hardest part here. But again, I'm already feeling better because I'm not, I'm not on the floor. <laughs> you know what? That's, I mean, that's, that's the real thing we're trying to avoid here, right? Is not being on the floor. I do have hardly any room to walk though. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do this side now. We'll get these big glance out. I'm trying to smooth it as best we can. Give me more in here. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. The the floor the floor just is painful. It's just painful to like. <laughs> it's just too much, too much on the body. And and again, so it's too much on the body, and uh, I don't have a floor big enough for this. So so this draping over the table thing, I think this will be just kind of fun. Fun to see if it works. And yeah, I think this part is the most annoying part, especially since I, I don't really have much room to walk around. So this table is about, uh, well, it's 65 inches. So it's just over five feet. And it really, it is, it is, I have, I can't, I can't walk around if there's like two inches on this side and like four inches on the other side. So I'm barely, I can barely, um, barely walk around it. So that's, that's how small this room is that I'm in. I want to go all the way to the other side yet and add one more clamp. I'm only going to, I'm not going to do more clamps than just the one back there because it's a little, it's not, it's a little wrinkly over there. But I'm going to call it after that. So this is the only thing we have to clamp. We don't have to do this for the batting or the front of the quilt, so that'll be nice. Okay, you guys, we are clamped. <laughs> and it looks centered, like it looks um, like the seam is this amount away is this about the same on the other side. And it looks like there's the same amount on the floor. Every every corner is touching the floor. So it, it's big. Alright, I think we're good. So next up is the batting. I did cut the batting. So uh, that was a little bit of a bear. And uh, okay, so now I have to figure this out. So there is a pretty predominant, uh, predominant fold in here. And uh, that goes uh, this way, like vertically here. So we do need to find, uh, I'm going to open this up and do the same thing. Basically. Oh, I'm still hitting my head. All right. But I can align, I can line up that seam. And that'll be our center. So fluffy. Oh man, you guys, I gotta lose the sweatshirt already. Thought it was chilly in here, but man, this is some physical work yet. Alright, so it has that pretty predominant fold. That's because on the roll, it was folded in half. This is a very... I got a, a whole giant roll of batting for like a king size quilt. And it was folded in half and then rolled. It's, it's that big. Okay, so I lined up that fold. So that'll be our uh, center this way and I can still, I can still feel, you know, where the center line is, but I gotta get, find the center um, the long way here. I think the top is going to be easy. The top I'm just going to center by counting squares. <laughs> so that'll be simpler. Okay. So I think this is about center on this side. Yeah. 
we're gonna have to tweak this for sure. Ugh, there's no way I would be able to press this. It's way too, too big. So that would be a really difficult way to hear. One thing I'm noticing though, I did get the natural kind just because I couldn't find, I couldn't find, oops, sorry. I couldn't find the white kind, which is uh, what I was looking for. I couldn't find the white batting big enough. And all, like a lot of these natural little, it has like little seeds and all that. I can tell that that is coming off in here. So I'm not happy about that. Um, hopefully they'll soften a little bit, but there is quite a bit of a mess here. So we're just gonna have to keep an eye on that. Um, luckily, I think the side that is going to be facing my white fabric on the front looks like it it's, um, doesn't have any of that on. It's a little cleaner, that side. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is not the easiest for sure. And we really do need this centered. I think I'm going to just kind of hold it on the center line and kind of pull it towards the center. I know. I don't know if that would actually be helpful. I don't think there's room in here for both of us. And he's not here, so. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're getting close here. So I'm going to uh, shimmy this to the center again. And again, I can feel through the table where that center is. And then this has got to come down to the center as well. the center. I can feel it again on those those uh, little fabric points right here. So I might just flip this and uh, um, just walk around it and see if things are still kind of aligning. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna flip this open. So I can still see the center line here. All right. That centered. Let's just flip this down. Soon we'll get to see that the front of the quilt. I think we're um, looking pretty good here. At least it's it's centered this way. At least I know. So as soon as I can get uh, the batting down on all sides, I'll be able to tell if it's close to being centered. Yeah, it seems like it's touching the end of the of all the sides. So I think we're good. It seems like it's, it's, it's about, it's actually a little bit bigger with this batting than the back. It just turned out that way. So, um, if I can see the batting going as far as 
the fabric on all the sides, I think we're good. Yeah, all right, I think we got our surface here. Ah, okay, that was the hard part. Next up should be a lot easier. Ooh, I'm gonna sneeze though from all this fuzzles. All right, the front. So the front, um, I'm gonna just do this by counting squares because <laughs> I think that's gonna be easier than folding it in half. So, um, and it is kind of folded in half already. So I just gotta find what side the 14 squares are on and what size the 12 are on. And then we'll just divide that by two. All right, so let's just count quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Great, so we are in the right uh, coordination already. Orientation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, here's the center point. So I can match that center point. I can still feel, I can still feel that line. So we'll just get this kind of started and then we'll, we'll tweak. And then this center line is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'm just peeking over the edge. There's definitely enough slack on, on this. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, here's the center line. This needs to move over to here. <laughs> we are getting there. Once once this is ready, then we are set to start pinning, and then it'll be so easy after that. But again, I'm still not on the floor. That's awfully nice. Try to shimmy that around a little bit. All right, now how are we doing? Let's count again, count our squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, this is right on the center. Okay, that's, that's great. Yeah, that, oh wait, is that our? Yeah, I think that's our center line there. Perfect, so this is good. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This should be our center line here. Oh, we're close. We'll shimmy it up just a hair. But remember, we have five inches all the way around here. And so we should be good. So yeah, so this is the center point right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay, we're good over there. I think we got it. Just about, at least. All right, so this side's got to shimmy up. We're a little crooked. Just double check. Yep, so th that's our center line here. So this needs to shimmy up. Yeah, now we're that way. All right. 
there and there. This is actually pretty close. There we are, we, we do have those five inches that it goes over. So I think, I think we got it right here. All right, I just wanna check around. It looks like on the floor we are, we have plenty all around. So that's a good sign. Yeah, I think we are good. Woo! All right, we can start pinning here. Ah, okay, that was the hard part, but I'm pretty sure we did it. Let's, gosh, now I'm paranoid. I'm just checking the back again. Yep, it's not overlapping the back. We are good. So, okay, let's start pinning this. So I have uh, th these curved uh, safety pins and they're fresh, so I haven't even opened them up yet. So I'm just gonna dump the whole thing or we'll just, we'll put a bunch on. There, shaking them down a little bit. Okay, we'll start there. Yeah. Yeah, I usually pin from the center out because then you can kind of smooth it as you go. You don't really want to stretch it so much. Um, where should we pin this? Let's, let's pin, I mean, I didn't, I haven't drawn out my design or anything yet. You know what, I'm just gonna pin in the center of each square. So that's gonna be going through like the, the pattern fabric. That's what we're gonna do. That should be enough, I think. I'm a little worried about scratching my table, but I'm thinking that it's gonna be okay. So I'm going through all three layers of, of um, the quilt now. So I have the top, the batting, and the middle. I think I am going to throw one extra in here. We'll go just right in the middle of the, where they, where they meet. Now, normally I think you'd want to figure out how you're going to quilt it a little bit if you're going to do something special, because then you can like not put pins where you're going to quilt to make it easier on yourself. But I don't know what I'm doing yet, so we're just going to get enough pins in here that it'll hold together for a little while. Oh, and these are fresh new pins, and I can tell they they go through the fabric really well. I, I've been having trouble with uh, my old pins, so I want to use these new ones first, and then if we need more yet, we'll go through, we'll use the old ones, and I'm going to just throw them out as I go if they're horrible. Yay, totally doing it on the table. That makes me happy. This is why I gave myself some extra like inches along the sides edges though, just cause um, I wasn't sure. I've never done this before. I wasn't sure how exact I'd be able to get it. But yeah, now it's just quick. Now we just pin and then we can scooch it. I think according to that book, we do want to, uh, like we'll unclamp it all obviously, and then we'll shimmy it down and they want you to reclamp it um, just so we can keep that bottom smooth. But we'll see how that goes. I suppose, yeah, it's probably a good idea. I think I'm going to go to the other side to do that side. Just because I am going to fold this up and, I don't know, throw it around, I am I'm adding these extra pins in the middle. Oh, 
Maybe it's overkill. How how uh, far away do you put your pins when you're facing? Farther or closer? I feel like I'm kind of in the middle of what I usually do. All right, I need more pins. Yeah, again, I'm not like stretching it, I'm just smoothing it. You pin about a hand width apart. Yeah, that's true. It depends on what batting you're using. Like if you're using a batting that um, really needs to be close together, then, then um, yeah, you probably have to pin it more. I think this, you don't actually have to quilt that close together. So I might be doing a little much. It's about a hand. <laughs> it depends, depends what way you, you do the hand. Oh, Warm and Natural is 10 inches. Yeah, that's what I thought, Patty. With with this Warm and Natural, it's actually a bit bigger. Um, so I'd probably totally get away with just doing the centers of all these. And maybe we will as we get towards the end. But again, I am going to be folding it up and moving it around. So I suppose it doesn't hurt having a few extra in there. Look, one of these days, I'll have to try spray, spray basting. I haven't done that. And, and I don't... Indoors here, I just don't know about that here. Um, and I can't, I can't go outside and come back in and do it because it's too cold outside. And it would get grass everywhere. Oh, I'm going through the tape here. I'll, I'll wait on that one. Alright, I'm going to start wrapping around the sides here, walking around the sides. All right, I'm gonna to scooch to the top. Look at all those. We're going to be able to move this pretty soon. After I finish this top row area where I'm at now, I'm going to, I'm going to undo my clamps and then we can shimmy this down. So I'm using my fingernail to open and close these pins. I know they have they make a device that helps with that. I might have to snag one of those.
Yeah, a lot of people like the spray base. That is, uh, you know, the I have the same question mark about that as I did uh, with using glue on on blocks when we were making blocks. But now I love using glue on on blocks. So maybe maybe I'll love um, using spray base too at some point. Again, I, I don't know how I would have done that here since I have no where to lay this out. Like I feel with spray basing, you kind of need to be able to lay it out or hang it up or something fully. Snowling. Oh, you're the same about glue, like you never use it, like kind of question like, oh, glue and fabric, is that a good idea? And then now you, now you do it. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, it's just so handy, like on, a, on like a paper piecing and English paper piecing, all that sort of stuff. It just makes it just so much easier. The ease of it, it uh, made me overcome the like weirdness of using glue real quick. So maybe that will be the same with spray basting once I try that. This summer sometime we'll have to try spray basting and then I can go outside and do it. Maybe we'll have the granny square quilt done by then. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to take off um, the binder or the clips here, I think. I'm just gonna throw these in my pocket. All right, so I am going to undo the clips that are over here. So I'm just gonna, oh, I gotta reach way down here. All right, I'm gonna, oops, just plop them on top. As I go, Ooh, some of these are tough. Did I only put one on the side? I must have only put one on the side. Good, because that one's difficult. All right, and then I have a few on the bottom here, but we will be able to shimmy, shimmy this down. In a sec. All right, we are unhooked. Oh, we know we're not. Got one more here. Okay, there we are. All right, so now I should be able to just scooch this down and keep going here, I think. I'm going to do it from the sides. There's still so much quilt, like it's still touching the floor on all sides, so a little difficult to maneuver. Hopefully I don't, maybe I don't have to clip it anymore. That would be cool. Um, I probably need to check it. So I'll fold or just peek under there a little bit, I think. Cute. Oh, it's going to be so nice. All right, so I'm I'm just at the edge here. See, so here's here's the edge. Uh, I just want to kind of 
get underneath here a little bit, I think, and um, it did suggest to clamp the green again. And I think I'm gonna at least on this side just to um, make sure that it's nice and flat, especially with us pulling on it all weird. I don't think I'm gonna bother with the sides though. I think I'm just gonna do the one. That should be pointy, right? Because the weight of it. All right. Even this all out again, and we should be ready to pin some more. Ha <laughs> ha. This is great. Okay, I'm I'm liking this way. I mean, it's still it's still not unawkward. I mean, this is still like a big job to do this, but. Um, you know, it's not like it's not on the floor still. I'm not on the floor, and that's way better. I think this must be good. I don't feel like there's anything weird going on underneath. All right, let's do it. Put the whole rest of these out. So I think next we'll pull it up all the way this way and do the top. And then we still have quite a bit on the sides to go yet. And I know it's, it's 920 already, but um, I will probably keep going on this uh, just to finish it tonight because this really is taking up a whole big space. Um, <laughs> like, uh, like we can't walk to the kitchen hardly because it's in the way. So um, I'd like to get this done so I can scooch it all out of the way and I gotta I'm out of food in the fridge again so I gotta cook this weekend um so I'm gonna need the space all right I saw my mom was in here early so uh happy birthday to my dad today I don't know if he's He's hearing or not, but happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> we will get to see him next week. We will be uh, visiting them for Thanksgiving. So, yeah, so next week, you guys, um, I'm only going to be here Monday and Tuesday. Uh, for the week. And I'm sure you guys are probably doing a lot of stuff too. At least, at least the U.S. people. <laughs> so I'll be back here on probably Monday or Tuesday. Oh yeah, you guys, so are you talking about the, uh, the, um, granny square quilt? I, I probably don't have the link on here anymore, but I do have a link to if you don't want the magazine they I, I think you can get an archive of the magazine but they do have the um just the pattern available for like a few bucks so um i'll throw i forgot to do that this afternoon but i'll throw a link up somewhere or if someone still has the link i know i posted it at some point um it's been a while we've gotten stuck on these other projects um but there is a link to the pattern, so so don't um, so don't like share. If you've bought the pattern, don't share it just because of you know copyrights. You don't want to be sharing sharing patterns. Um, but I will I will throw up a link to the where you can download where you can get it and download it. Downside here. Oop, I need this guy. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that'll be a fun one. Um, there's some cute examples in in it too. Uh, so they did, I think, a whole big queen size quilt, or maybe even bigger. Uh, but then they just did for for the uh, granny square quilt. There was an example of just doing four squares, and that looked really cute, just like the four. So I might just end up doing a, a lap quilt. Um, I'll figure out what size that would be, uh, and I might just do that versus a whole another big, huge queen size situation. Y'all, I need so many queen size quilts, I think. But I could always use another lap quilt. <laughs> Throw one of those everywhere. So yeah, for the granny square quilt, I'll, I'll probably just do the lap, the lap quilt. Um, Kathy, I'm gonna think about that um, over over uh, the next uh, few, like the next week or so. And I'll, um, especially now that we're going to be wrapping this up, I'll, I'll get the pattern so you guys can link to it. And, um, then we can see, we can go over it and see what we'll start to need for supplies. So maybe we'll do that next week. So next week, um, on Monday, uh, I, I will put that link up, uh, later tonight or this weekend for the digital pattern and the digital pattern you'll, you can get right away. Um, so you'll be able to look at it right away and, uh, we'll talk about supplies and what we might need for that on Monday here. And then we can work on like the splendid sampler a little bit for the next couple days. Um, which would be nice getting, getting back on there a little bit. And then uh, maybe after, maybe we start that one in January. We'll just let this one lie. This could be an unfinished project for a little while. And uh, um, we'll start we'll start the granny square quilt. And I might actually do the orophila quilt too. So we'll throw in a block now and then with that and we'll work on the splendid sampler. So I think we got a full docket. And, and uh, one week a month now I want to do the embroidery, uh, embroidery of the month. We'll do that too. So I think we got plenty of projects all lined up. Well, that's good. A couple new ones, finish some old ones, little variation of projects, which is great because I love having, you know, it, it, it can get overwhelming having so many projects, but sometimes the mood has to be right for a certain project, right? So if you have like a project ready for every situation you're in or whatever mode or mood you're in for that day, then then there's always something to work on. So that's that's nice. I do like that. We're almost done with the, not done done, but done with the, this section ready to move it again. I have to undo the clamps and then I'll scooch it up just a hair because we just have like one more row down here to do and then I'll pull all of it this way and then there's still the sides we haven't done any of the sides and there's like a good three rows at least um, vertically to do on, on there. I'm trying to decide what to what colors to do for the granny quilt. Um, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit. Maybe maybe I'll try and find some because I don't think it you know it looks. If you read through the instructions, I don't know if anyone's done that yet, but it's not like a scrappy quilt. Like it's not. It looks like it is, but it's not. Like, cut a bunch of squares and then sew them together like a granny square. There, there's a, a method to it where it's like long strips. So I do think you actually need yardage. I think you need like width of fabric yardage for it. Um, so that's, that's going to be, um, the trick with that. 
All right, I'm gonna scooch it up a little bit more. And there we go, that's the end. So, all right, so it does look like we went a hair crooked on the batting, but I think we're covered. Yes, our batting is covered. Um, oh, I think we're covered on all angles and we got quite a bit here. So this is actually a good, maybe like seven inches. So hopefully we have enough on that side, but I think we will. So I don't think I need to do anything with this back of this fabric anymore. I'm just gonna pin, I don't need to clamp this down again, I don't think. All right, let's pin this last row here and then um, I'll pull it all up this way and we'll pin the top. So, oh, there's actually quite a bit to go here yet, but we're doing it. I need to open the second thing of pins. Does feel good to have bought more of these though. All right, out of pack number one, I knew it was smart to get two of these. Oh, that's got to feel good to rearrange the craft room again. I'm tempted to just shimmy to one side before doing the top, but I think I better go all the way back to the top first or the top of my table here. Yay, you got the pattern for the granny square quilt. Yeah, so um, read over it if you, once you guys get the quilt um, pattern, read over it and then you'll see what I mean, that there's, it's just a little, I think you need yardage and not, not scraps. I'm going to have to look at it again. I'm a little loose on the edge here, but oh well. I didn't square this up and, you know, I'm sure I didn't sew it perfectly square either. Ooh, a cream tone on tone with muted. That would be a very lovely uh, granny square. Yeah, I have like some of that, I don't know, is it 30s reproduction fabric? Is it from 30s? Like 30s reproduction fabric that I've had for like a decade. And I was thinking maybe that would be a fun way to use the granny square, um, use them up for the granny square quilt. Um, but I, again, I don't know if that's full yardage, so I'm going to have to check on that. Um, but it'd be fun to do like a, a, a bright color with that maybe for the, for the main color instead of white. Just going to doing this quilt with white, so um, maybe it's time to switch up colors again. All right, just enough. So, all right, I'm going to pull it up. Uh, this way now, and uh, we have to do this whole panel for the for the top. So let's move these pins. Oh, it's coming together. Ooh, we can peek too. Let's peek. Oh yes. Yeah, so look, it's it's together. This is gonna be a very light quilt, but that's kind of what I wanted. Come on. All right, there, we're not clipped anymore. All right. So I think we will clamp, because I got a whole bunch of weird bulk up in that corner. We definitely have to flatten this again. So I'm gonna grab some clamps and go to the top. And uh, we will work on it up here. Yeah, definitely need to even this out again. So I'm going to kind of, there's 
like a lot of bulk in the corner here. I'm going to lift up these pieces and um, just kind of smooth out the fabric underneath. That's how that's going to go over here. And we'll get one more clamp over here. Alright, I think that'll do. Let's smooth out this top. I think that's good. And I think I could definitely see doing um, this on the table again. This, I, I'm, I'm calling it a win. I mean, yeah, it's awkward, but I am, remember I am using, I'm, I have a very large quilt here. Like if I just had a twin size quilt or a lap quilt, ooh, this would be easy peasy. Do I remember? Oh, I can't read all that yet, Sylvia. I'm sniffling though, just because of all the fuzz. I haven't quite sneezed. <laughs> I feel like I'm on, I've been on the verge. Oh, do I remember the number measurements of the triangle quilt? This, I, I, I think we started off with a layer cake, which is a 10 inch, 10 inch squares. I had to cut my own, um, but I think we started out with 10 inch squares and I think they ended up, um, they ended up with, eight. these are eight inch blocks. Whew, we still have the sides to do yet, but I'm feeling good. Still feeling like I want to finish this tonight. So when I'm done with these pins, like after we've quilted them, I will leave them all open. Um, you know, now they're, they're all closed, I'll leave them all open because then I won't have to open them up every single time I want to use them. Getting rid of one extra step. Oh, I did that already. All right. Row. And again, we're probably going a little overkill on the pins, but oh well. Sticking to it now. Yeah, if you do decide to work on it, this make sure to get the pattern. I think there's a, just a inexpensive digital pattern. Um, 
just because then the then the designer can can get paid. When we're done with this though, I'm not gonna clamp anymore. I'm just gonna shimmy it to the edge, to the sides, because we gotta do the sides yet. I think this is going faster than when we laid out the blocks on the floor. That took a long time. I think we started this in summer, right? <laughs> so this is, it's only been a few months that we've been working on this and we've been working on other projects too. But wow, I'm so happy I'm not on the floor. This, this really is great doing it on the table here. And I would try the, I, I'm not opposed to trying the pool noodle method either, but I, I would try that on a smaller quilt, not a big quilt. And a, a, still, I, I would need the space too. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the space is an issue um, all together, all the way around. So this seems to be working. I can still do it in my small space. That, that's been kind of the test of this quilt. Like how much can I do in a small space? I mean, we didn't lay it out. Um, in a small space, I, I, I bet you I could have though, like just, it would have been more random. Um, but I think that would have been an option. I think I'm going to unclamp these and scooch the whole thing up. I didn't think of uh, uh, trying to do this in a small space until until we <clears throat> got this far, really. So, all right, shimmy it down a bit more. All right, last couple of rows are on the table here, and we have um, enough enough batting and enough backing. <laughs> so uh, our centering must not have gone too poorly. So that's good. Yeah, we're almost done um, this way. We'll just have to do the edges next. And because I can walk on either side of the table, I don't even feel like I'm, I mean, you know, I'm using my back a little bit like bending over, but I'm not so hunched over or bent over that I feel like I'm hurting myself. So, yep, table's a winner. The only trick is though, I bet you I'm scratching the table a lot. So if you have a nice table, um, I don't know if I would suggest doing that. I would maybe try this on, if I had, again, if I had the space, I'm not too worried about damaging this table, but like if I had the space, I would maybe just use, you know, one of those white plastic folding tables, something that it wouldn't matter if it got a little dinged up. Yeah, I think so, Robin. I think I'm gonna plenty binding. Yeah, I mean, we went way overboard. On, or I went way overboard. <laughs> I know I wasn't really supposed to do this much, but I went way overboard on how much 
edge I had, um, or I was using, like, I, I did, like, five inches, and I think it looks more like six inches, really. Um, but I'm still happy I did that, because, yes, I will cut it away, and I'll have enough to use as binding still, uh, which is great. Uh, and I just was not confident in this table method yet. So maybe next time and maybe with a smaller quilt, I won't use quite as much, but um, I'm okay with the fact that I did here. Yep, all these blocks are not, some of them are pretty bloopy, but gonna have to live with that. I think I am going to have to dig into my old uh, safety pins yet. be off my list. That'll be, be good. Yeah, a cutting mat underneath would, would be a good way to protect it. I would need like a really big cutting mat, but to tape, like to tape a cutting mat down, that's, that'd be a good, great idea, I think. So it wouldn't scratch, scratch the table. Okay, I'm gonna scooch it one way and stay right where I'm at. Stab myself. We'll get blood on this quilt yet. <laughs> uh. These ones are stuck together. There. Yep. Jennifer, I think I'm going to just stay till I'm done pinning because um, I got to do, I got to make food this weekend. So I got to be able to walk through this space. Um, so I'm done with the one direction. Now I got to um, shimmy it, do this all the sides yet. So there is kind of quite a bit to do yet. But the whole center is done. All right, so here's the edge um, of this. I don't know if you guys can see yet. So I'm gonna just um, start scooching it up. So right here is the last bit there. Now you can see there's, there's my batting edge. And it looks like we have backing over there too. So uh, we, have, we have appropriately centered the quilt. It's official. <laughs> so that's, that's nice. Actually, I think I might scooch up to the center a little bit again. Just so I'm still kind of pinning from the center. Just want to make sure that this backing behind here is still not, not loopy. All right, I suppose that's looking, looking decent. All right, so I'm gonna just start here, I guess, and work my way back down this way. I'll have to push it forward again, but um, yeah, I think we're gonna definitely use the rest of these. We'll start, we'll start here. All 
I just wanted to kind of start in the middle-ish so I'm not like pulling on it weird or twisting it weird by starting at one end. I still want to work inside to the out. Getting there though. Uh, Pamela, I will be quilting it myself. I will be attempting to quilt it on my normal, just uh, that 70s Kenmore sewing machine that I sew on every night here. Um, that'll be interesting uh, uh, if we can, if we're able to do that. I want to draw out um, a design and we'll have to figure out how to transfer that. I, you know, if you're going to draw a design on your quilt, in theory, I should have put that on before pinning it, but I didn't want to wait. I wanted to pin it. Um, so I got to draw out a design. Design. I want it to be like a cute little whole picture, like a whole thing. And then we'll have to draw it on this quilt, <laughs> which will be interesting. And then we'll quilt it. So I got to draw that out. So once I have that drawn, then I can start, uh, like once I have it sketched, then I can start drawing it on. But I don't, expect that to be for a little while yet so so um i'm getting this just pinned to set aside for now i'm gonna actually draw on the front robin so i'm, I'm gonna quilt it on the front too but with the purpose of that you'll be able to see the design on the back really easily so i might do that old school like kindergarten way of doing it where you have a square and i grid out the drawing and then i just like try and draw in the square what i have um in the in my sketch <laughs> we'll see i did um uh, find another method that might actually work really well um the tool method um where you draw your design on tool, which is kind of like a mesh, and then you lay that on top, and then you just draw over the design again, and it, it transfers it to your piece because it's going through all the mesh holes. That might be an option that will that would work as well. So um, there's options. All right, I got I got to shimmy this up just a hair to finish up this corner. Ha ha! This is the corner now we're done uh, with this corner. Um, then I'll need to, uh, I think I'll come to the other side because I need to get, I'm going to run out of pins. And then we will shimmy it back up and do the other corner. And then we still have that other, the whole other edge to go. But this is going quickly now, I think. Yay! I'll have tons of batting left over too. I've been making like face cloths with with um, excess batting though, like excess batting. I've just been cutting it up into little squares because it's 100% cotton, you know? So I've been cutting it up to little squares and then using it for like toner and stuff and then I just throw them in the wash so that's been kind of fun and there's plenty of batting here that I could do a whole lot of other things with it too but I didn't really want to Frankenstein a um, king sized ish quilt together so I got the we're splurging on the batting for this I got enough that it'll last me a while. All right, we are pinned I, at this corner at least. I'm going to come around again. Oops, I'm stepping on the quilt. So much quilt. There's so much quilt everywhere. I got to lift it up to walk back here through the six inches of space that I have. All right, I'm going to push this back up. We'll get that other edge, the other corner. All right, that's where we stopped pinning. 
I'll make sure the underneath is good, and I think it is. Okay, that looks good. I have a couple more pins and then we're gonna have to break out uh, my old pins. Which is fun. All right, out of those pins, so I'm going to grab, here we go. On the shelf here, I got my other thin, or thing of, thing of pins. Oop, pop some of those on. And if any of these just don't go through the fabric, I'm tossing them. These are the ones that are annoying, some of them. And I think I've gone through that process a little bit already. Last time I worked on a quilt, I'm just like, and my straight pins too. Any of those that weren't straight anymore, I'm like, you're out of here. It's so much nicer to have pins that work right away. You guys, I keep hitting you, sorry. I keep headbutting you. Oh, this is just so nice to be off the floor, that's for sure. For sure, sure. All right, let's scooch up some more. There's quite a bit on this side to do yet. Oh yeah, quite a bit to do. We're gonna have to scooch one more time actually too. So I was in, I don't think I was anywhere near the middle before. All right, I think we're good enough. All these pins are decent so far. Well, I will be going to my parents for Thanksgiving, so <laughs> I think my mom will be doing Thanksgiving, but with the help of <laughs> all the kids, hopefully. I like making cranberry sauce. Hopefully I can make some cranberry sauce. Ugh, exactly, Noeline. I just, this is definitely 
feels like I'm getting something done here. And like it feels like it's at a place that it can just sit and be put away for a little while. And we'll get it out again when we um, want to quilt it. Like I'm feeling okay stopping um, after this step for a little while, you know, ready to start a new quilt and, and all that. I think that I'm, I'm okay with that at this stage. Still itching for it to be done for real, but I'm okay with it being folded up and looking like a quilt at least for a little while. All right, that's the final bit of the corner here. But man, I've been watching <laughs> so many episodes of the great british uh, baking show so it would be really fun to try some crazy thing on there for uh over thanksgiving some Biscuit with a creme pat and a, uh, and a raspberry jam and a French meringue and an Italian meringue and for the Genoese sponge and blah blah blah. <laughs> that would be something, something where I could use some of that language. That'd be good. <laughs> All right, I need a couple more pins. Not that many. Before I have to shimmy this down the other direction. Yeah, I must have gone through all these before because I haven't had a bad one yet. So I, I have a feeling I must have uh, did that already. <laughs> Get my hair in your way again. Ah, all right, so that's one side all done. I need to shimmy it all the way to the other side. All right. I kind of want to get it in the middle again, I think. So let's just pull it all this way. Oh, it's so bulky. <laughs> so much fabric. Oh, there's, there's a spot where it's not done yet. Okay. There. Ah, we're at the table here. Again, I just don't want to make, I, I want to make sure that the, um, the backing isn't like folded under anywhere. Feels a little weird up there, but we'll, we'll get up there. I think I'll just start here and then we'll do this corner down here and then do the rest. Oh, how many pins did I buy? That's a good question. So I did, 
I bought two um, two of these, so this is a 100 count. So we've used we've used over 200 pins so far. So maybe this is a 300 pin project. this corner where I'm at now and then pull it and work the other way. Ooh, stab myself. So I turned my entire refrigerator into soup, <laughs> into soup yesterday. So um, I've just had healthy soup for two days in a row. And I'm, I think I'm gonna have some when I'm done here. That'll be my, my celebratory soup for getting this out of the way, I think. But yeah, so I need to, I need to get groceries this weekend again. And that's why I can't have this laying around anymore. I'm gonna get these three and then I'm gonna scooch it up. And we have quite a few to go the other way yet, but we're getting there, totally getting there. And I'm digging this table method. It was pretty awkward at the beginning, but not so awkward that I'm crawling over the floor and taping the floor and all that. So I think we're good. All right, good doing it with this method. stabbing myself. Okay. There we go. Oh, hey Laura. Yeah, I am, I am, uh, I am, I'm staying on until I finish this. So I am a half hour over our normal time and it'll probably be a whole nother half hour yet. I'm staying on till this is done. There's no way I'm leaving this till Monday. Uh, like I said earlier, it's taking up my entire dining room and I can't even get to the kitchen without squeezing in like a six inch, uh, maybe like a foot space. And that's, that's not going to fly for a whole, a whole weekend, especially when I have to cook. I don't want to cook with all this white fabric sitting, sitting around too. So it's getting done. Then I can clean up and vacuum and all of that stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Laura, I, I definitely think I could have split this size uh, to make uh, a bunch of smaller quilts. So they're, they're, I did the biggest quilt I think that the pattern had in it. And I did it that way because I wanted to use up all the fabric I got. And uh, I think the fabric, the amount of fabric I got for this was like the exact amount for this size quilt. And I thought, eh, it'd be a nice summery quilt. For, for the bed, so I went with it, and it, yeah. <laughs> and I thought it'd be kind of a, a challenge uh, to do a quilt that big. Um, but yeah, now it's big. So there, there were some examples, or there were some instructions for smaller sizes. So there was like a twin and a lap, I probably. Um, but yeah, this one for sure. Could definitely break it up into two. 
it would be seven squares um, by six squares. Instead of 14 by 12. Oh, you're machine embroidering tonight. Fun. Ooh, that pin was a little weird. All right, I just need three more pins for down here, and then we will pull it up again. Getting there. Oh, I had a couple pins here already. I'm gonna have to do a floor check when I'm done here just to make sure that I didn't drop any. I'm wearing I'm wearing slippers with like shoe bottoms on it, so hopefully I don't step on one. I don't think I dropped any, but you know, never quite know. All right, I'm gonna pull it up this way now. It's a lot of quilt here. I'll just start there and work my way up. There is quite a bit to go up there. It's a row at a time. Thanks for hanging out with me this way, you guys. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this size for a queen size. So it is long. Remember, I, I showed you a picture, and it's long for our queen size bed, but. I'll be able to tuck it underneath the pillows and it'll look really cute. Um, or I can flip over the top when I'm sleeping. Or like, yeah, like flip over the top, just the top part, top little edge, and there'll be like that bright green popping out underneath. So I think it's going to be cute, even though it's long. And my husband's tall, so I bet Jake he'll like it being a little extra, extra long. Keep his toes warm. Yeah, I like extra overhang on my quilts too. Um, that's why my jean quilt, <laughs> another unfinished quilt, that has a lot of built-in extra. Especially in winter, you don't want... Um, you don't want let in, to let in all that cold air. I'm gonna pull this towards me a little bit and reach it too far. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet, Noli. Couldn't let me do this alone. <laughs> We're so close. We're so close. But man, I'm really, really happy I bought those extra pins because I would have um, used up this whole jar for sure and probably needed more. I'm going to try folding it up here yet tonight. Actually, I'm going to we'll do a couple and then I'm going to bring it forward again. It's definitely getting to that point where I can tell I've been doing this for a little while. Uh, so I'm trying to not lean over quite as much. Ooh, I see the top. Yay! I thought we had more, but nope, it's, I can, we're completely off the floor over there. I'm not nearly as tired or, you know, hurting or whatever as what I would be if I did this on the floor. Oop, didn't do it. 
do this row. Hopefully you didn't get all weird and bunched up underneath, but I don't think so. I think we're doing well here. Or it doesn't feel like the backing's weird. This is done. I'm gonna celebrate with some soup <laughs> and some more uh, Great British Baking Show, I think. What I really want is wine, but we don't have any wine in the house right now. Ugh. That's a big bummer. <laughs> Yep, I will do this again here for sure. Especially for a smaller quilt, this would be really great. And I, I don't especially like those big clamps, so I could see getting um, some some of those smaller, uh, just normal binder clips. But the binder clips were too that I have are way too small for for this, so that didn't work out this time. Glad I found those clamps, though. Just a few more. Uh, is this the biggest quilt I pinned? Probably not. I think my, I think the jean quilt is maybe a hair bigger, but I'm sure I did that on the floor and that was ages ago too. So, but this is, this is close. And it, it might actually be the biggest, but I think the jean quilt is a little wider. But it might be a little shorter. So yeah, it's, it's probably equal to the biggest quilt that I pinned. One more, this is the last pin. Yay! All right, let's put the top on that. There, I, I have enough pins for uh, another quilt, maybe. <laughs> okay, let's just do a little quick peek at the back. Oh, back's looking good. So back is all pinned. Oh, it looks great. So this is like the first moment that it's like a real quilt with all three layers together. Cool, I want to try folding it up, even though that might be super difficult. Let's get it all on the table first. Ooh, it's got weight to it. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to fold this. Ugh. Yay, yay. Oh, it's going to look so cool with this green as the back. I am so excited about that. We can get a, like our, our first glimpse of what it's going to look like. See, so like with the green, um, I can just fold it over like this on the bed. So you'll have this pop of green and then the, the white. Oops, sorry. Bumped you guys again. Um, yeah, this wasn't too bad. I mean, you know, 
we've been here a little while, nine from 8.30, so almost two hours, not quite two hours. But for a whole quilt, and uh, I wasn't on the floor for two hours, very happy about that. I have no idea what I'm doing right now, though. I'm trying to fold this up. So heavy. Yeah, I'm just making a huge mess here. I'm gonna have to, I think, just go into the living room and shush this around. Oh, maybe not. Let's let's put it this way. There we go. We're getting it. Pins. I'm very happy, Robin. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Nice to have yeah, it this far for sure. I think I'm gonna do it in third so I can hide. I'm gonna hide all this, the um, edging. We'll hide it within the quilt right now. Then it's just the pretty stuff on the outside and it'll protect it a little bit maybe. Oh yeah, it sounds like a dog's nails on the floor. It totally does. All right, let's do the other side. Yeah, something like that I think we'll do. Same thing this way, we'll try and get this uh, folded edge. Ooh, it's so big now! <laughs> All right, wow, yep, there, that looks like a quilt that is ready to be quilted. <laughs> awesome, you guys. All right, I am going to flip you around, and we are going to call it a night here, but I can show you. I'll show you this a little bit better. Okay, hello! So we did it. All right, so here, let me show you it. There, it looks like a quilt. <laughs> it looks like a soft, poofy quilt. Awesome. All right, you guys. Whew, we did it. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me this long and uh, getting it done. It feels awesome. It's going to feel good to clean up this area. This is huge though. I mean, in my brain, it wasn't going to be this big. I got to figure out where to put it now. <laughs> where did I let this sit for months uh, until, until we're ready to quilt it? I don't know. I'm going to have to find a spot for it. Uh, <laughs> but awesome. Uh, thank you so much, you guys, for joining me here tonight. Um, I will be back on Monday. Uh, I'll be here Monday and Tuesday, and then that'll probably be it for the week. Uh, ooh, yeah. Oh, pillowcase. Yeah, I should have. Ooh, gosh, it wouldn't even fit in the pillowcase. It might be too big for a pillowcase. I'll have to wrap it a little bit differently, but that's a good idea. Then it'll be protected at least because I want that the white protected uh, for sure. But awesome. Ah, oh, it feels good. So I'll get this up on YouTube this weekend. I know I'm behind on the YouTube videos. Again, I'll get them all up uh, tomorrow. And uh, awesome. I will see you guys again next week. Thank you, thank you for joining me. Uh, yeah, two hours, two hours of pain. <laughs> Good night.